Thanks for joining me on Wednesday. This is What's New Wednesdays for everything new happening in the shop this week. Um, so let me just start with a couple of announcements. First and foremost, the IOD release. So the spring release happened on Friday. And thank you to all those of you that have been jumping on board with it. The one thing that I wanted to mention about it, and it's very cool because there was a couple of new, um, new elements that were talked about. One, the new molds have the name of the mold on the side rim, which has been such a long time coming. And uh, if you're like me, I've, I've written the name of the mold in Sharpie on the back and it's all worn away. So I hate sometimes when I'm doing videos and I'm telling you guys, I don't know, I don't know what this is called anymore. It's like a couple of years old. It looks like this. Um, so now they're all going to have the name on the outside so that if you've got them stored, maybe in a bin, you're going to be able to see the name on that upper upper edge, which is awesome. The masks from now on are coming printed. So you'll be able to see exactly what the mask is for, what element. I mean, if you ever did like the chrysanthemum or peony masks, um, I, I feel your pain because you're flipping the, the flowers around and which is the right side, which is the wrong side, which way you're rotating. It, it was, it was crazy. Just the time it took sometimes to be able to find the, the right mask to be able to fit on things. Now, they'll be printed just the same as um, the bottom sheet of the, the stamps is printed. So you'll be able to see exactly what they are. The other thing is these. So this new stamp packet, um, apothecary labels, comes with four mini sheets. They are lightly tinted so they're lightly tinted blue so that again if you lost like the little a somewhere it's far easier to find it now that it's tinted than when it was clear and you know three months later all of a sudden you'd find the the a sticking to the back of something <laughs> additionally you've got this little pouch to be able to store them in and each comes in its own little sleeve so this has by far been one of the most popular elements of the release, enough so that IOD has sold out. Now, only the inlays were, um, only the inlays are limited edition. So everything else can be reordered by your stockists, except there's no product for them to reorder. That will not be restocked until they're thinking May. So if you really want this item, then there are likely still some stockists that haven't sold out. I was moving pretty quickly through these on Friday. So I reordered on Saturday. That was a smart thing to do because now the distributors are also <laughs> like the Canadian distributor, the US distributor, they're all sold out. So they can't get them, they can't restock until May, but I have two left and I have a few more coming. I would expect on Friday that they should arrive on Friday. So there are still some to be had. They will be getting restocked, but if you definitely need it now and you need it urgently, I still have a couple. I still have um, a few more that are coming. I can't remember for the life of me how many I ordered. I don't know. Six, nine. You usually do six, I think. Yeah, I don't know. I might have, I, might, I, I don't know. I don't know how many. <laughs> so just so that you know, this is, this was the big seller. I expect, now this is just me supposing. So I don't know what you guys think, but I'm supposing that because this was the first thing that sold out, we can expect to maybe see, um, this size and this format of a stamp in future releases. So I don't know if they'll do one per release, but I think that we'll see more of this. There's a lot more people that are working on smalls and um, this just really addresses it. But this is great because you get, um, you know, you get the two alphabets, you get the different uh, labels and apothecary labels and things for, for working on on jars and small projects. So it's perfect. It also works 
perfectly with the apothecary label molds as well. So it's sized to work in in tandem with that. So brilliant. But I just thought that I'd mention you might start to hear about these being sold out. They will be coming back. Um, so it's not a limited edition. They will be coming back probably not till uh, sometime in May. But there are still stockists that have some of the product that, that aren't fully sold out or maybe some stockists that were like me and uh, jumped in right away <laughs> to reorder while there were still some to reorder. So um, that's the good news on that one. The other piece this Saturday is when we have our alcohol ink painting class. The last day to register for that is tomorrow. Um, I will be shutting it down tomorrow night so that Friday I can get all the supplies prepped for everybody coming on the Saturday. So if learning how to paint with alcohol inks and really painting is a bit of a misnomer since it's more moving the ink and blowing the ink than it is actual painting. But if it's something that you ever want to explore, that's this Saturday at 1 p.m. Videos, videos. So Monday's video... Um, was I had thrifted some little wooden spools. So Monday's video was all about making these little wooden spool houses. Now each of them has a felted roof, right? And uh, with some, some little embroidered decorations on them and then hand painted windows and doors. These are perfect for, I mean, certainly in a picture on the video, um, I have them sitting on stacked rocks, which looks really cute. So creating your own little vignette, you could create your own little fairy village. You could gift um, them to a sewer because of the felted top. They make wonderful little pin, pin cushions as well. So super cute, super fun little, little uh, ones to make. You can check out that video. Today's video was a super simple one, but we made some Easter cards, but this was really addressing some of the questions from people about, okay, but I can't draw. This is the perfect little um, Easter craft. This is the perfect little craft. What we did was we focused on breaking things down into really super simple shapes. So you don't have to be able to draw to do this. And in fact, I even recommend you could be doing this side by side with your kids. You could say, okay, let's start with this shape and you're just drawing simple little shapes. And we did it um, a couple of ways, uh, just using pencil crayons. You could do it with pencil crayons, you could do it with crayons, you could do it with paints. I mean, whatever you wanted to do. This one was done with ink. And this one, I actually showed you how you could do it with watercolor pencils. So using the watercolor pencils like a pencil crayon and then in engaging those lines with the water and a brush and created more of a, of a watercolor finish. So a couple of little techniques that we used in there, but really it was all about how to break down your object into some simple shapes. If you think about it just from the perspective of simple, basic, replica, replica, rep, replicable, <laughs> things you can repeat. <laughs> Um, shapes, then it makes it super easy. So I'm not super talented at drawing, but doing things like that, where you're just breaking down to the small shapes, makes it so much easier. So check that out because it's not just um, an Easter card so much as it's a little mini art lesson, but it definitely gives you a little craft to do with your kids as well, because we can be learning while we're having fun or we're playing with our kids, right? This Friday's video is a little bit different. Now, I was gifted a big bag of fashion scarves. So not winter woolen scarves. These are the ones that you would wear with your suits and your dresses and their shawls and that kind of thing. And so expect to see them popping up in a lot of these upcoming videos. So the first thing, and I don't know why I felt compelled that the first thing I needed to make from these old scarves was a three-dimensional chicken, but I did, and I did make it. And so Friday is showing you how you could make it. And she's just kind of super cute, <laughs> a little bit funky.
colors are all going to differ depending upon what um, what scarves that you're you're using. They could be super colorful. This is um, three different pattern scarves, all kind of interwoven. There's some that are, you know, a little bit more colorful in there, layered underneath some of the black and cream. And uh, I think you could go super funky with this as well. But we walk through all the steps. So this is a little bit of a longer video. I didn't film a lot of any of each of the steps. But, you know, I walk you through the building of the armature and doing some of the clay sections and then, then the layering of all the fabrics and things. So it's, it might seem long when you're looking at it. I think it's about 45 minutes. Um, but it just walks through all of the steps. They're all pretty straightforward. There is nothing really hard or difficult about it, but I think it was, it was kind of a lot of fun and definitely um, the first in the series of the scarf videos. I have another one that I'm working on. I have another idea that I just ordered a, a component for. So when that comes in, we'll do that one too. So check those videos out. Um, I am... I think about 128 subscribers away from hitting 10,000 on YouTube, which will be a huge wahoo moment for me. I 10,000 just when I started the YouTube channel just seemed just like an insurmountable number to be able to reach. So if you're not subscribed on YouTube for the videos, I invite you to do that. It certainly helps me out. Um, but again, there's over 400 different videos there that uh, you can check on and see if there's, you know, if you're ever hurting for a project idea, there's probably something there that's going to spark your interest. But again, like, share, refer your friends, anything like that. There's no cost. All of the tutorials are free and um, helps me get to 10,000. And then onward. I don't know what the new goal will be after 10,000 because I didn't think I'd hit this one. 10,001. So, yes, yeah, so the goal will be 10,001. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's talk about a number of the new things. It's kind of a, a, a different mix here, both from price points. We've got some items that are much more antique tonight. So let's start off with one of the biggest ones here. So this which is very heavy and I think it, it weighs in at almost six kilograms, if not a little bit more. So if you're interested in this, expect the shipping to be high. But when I research these, now this is an old vintage, possibly even antique, but I'm just calling it vintage because I don't have a way of dating it exactly. But this is an old English um, tantalus, is what it's called, tantalus liquor cabinet so households would lock up their liquor so that their staff could not partake and this has a key so this comes with its key which unlocks this ledge that opens up and allows you to slide the decanter bottle so these are de crystal decanter bottles with cut cut uh, glass lids um, and allows you to slide those decanter bottles out and be able to access the liquor and then slide them back in and lock them away. So this, um, I'm selling this one for $125 on the website. I will be listing it for substantially more on Etsy, possibly eBay if I have to go that route. Um, but some of the ones that I saw, the cheapest one that I saw online was $400 and many of them went up as high as $800 and even $1,200. This does not seem like a $1,200 one to me because it's not, um, it's not pristine, but it is definitely worth every penny of the $125. So if you like unusual vintage items or you have a bar that you'd like to be in control of. <laughs> um, you know, if your kids are at that age, then you just might want to, to enjoy this little baby. And again, shipping's going to be a little bit on this one, but um, it still puts you well under the value of this. Danielle Eakins is watching on Facebook. 
Hey, Danielle. And nice to Shannon see you. And Shannon F is watching on YouTube. Ah, hi, Shannon. And she says, I am Mia. I don't know what that, what that refers to. I am. I don't know. Anyway, she's here watching. Okay, Shannon, we're confused. We don't know what that means. You are, you are Maya, Mia. All right, fill us in. What does that mean? Let me share with you in the meantime, the next little antique piece. So this is the same price. This is $125. This is an old antique window frame that has been used and had a uh, stained glass rose piece inserted into it. So this isn't a faux stained glass, real stained glass. So the cut and the, and the leading um, with it comes with the hanging chains. And uh, again, we're doing 125 on this one because they start for substantially more. Um, and there's no, I, I can see my necklace in there and it looks like there's a crack in the glass. There's no crack in the glass. This, this is in perfect condition and uh, nice, nice and bright um, glass in there. Okay. Those are the high items. <laughs> and still like, you know, that, that's one thing to know about our, our site is we make every, um, we take every opportunity to offer all of our items, which let's face it, technically are all used. I mean, as soon as you go into anything's vintage, it's used, right? Um, but uh, so even some of the, and you know, any of the collectibles and things, but we always make a really concentrated effort to be able to get the best pricing that we can so that we can give you the best pricing possible. So I get like on the Tantalus, I get that we could probably go and list it elsewhere, you know, on an auction site for four or $500, but it's not really what I'm about. And I'm not looking to list things at 12 different locations. It's like, I would like to be able to sell if it helps pay for our rent and you get a great deal and a great story, then we're really happy with that. And it's kind of how it works. Okay. We have from time to time gotten um, temptations wear in. Um, some people love it, some people don't. It's just really lovely little ceramic pieces. I was looking, I gotta, I gotta put glasses on now because I'm starting to look at price tags. Um, so this one is in the red lace pattern. So it is a loaf pan with the lid and so the inside is like uh, the red lace, but opposite colors. And it also has the meatloaf tray. So you could bake your banana bread in here um, as is, right? You could do a pate, big, big pate in there if you want to. But when you're doing your meatloaf, very often uh, people will use or want to use a little tray like this, a little insert, put the meatloaf on top so that all the fat drops to the bottom and the meat doesn't cook kind of frying in the, in the fat. So it's a three piece, three piece set for $22. And uh, again, online. Oh, I forgot to bring Nick over there. See on top of my red calendar is my white uh, little pad that I have all the listings of products. If you could bring that over, because there's a couple of things that were interesting little finds. I just wanted to share some of my research. So this one, the lowest price that I saw was $40 online for this, and um, it did not have the insert. So bonus on that guy. Okay. This, I, you know what? I just, I love this. I just... Um, Nice and simple, great condition. It's a, a natural wood sailboat. So the sails and the base, and then it has all brass trimming, both in the, in the caps and on the uh, gunnels, the sides of it. And it's got a felted bottom, and this is for $14 on the site. Just kind of a nice, slick little kind of minimalistic design. It's just very pretty. Okay. Um, where am I going? 
Okay, let's go to the fairy light. Now, this is a brand new to the store frosted fairy light. So the pattern is different than, I think I have another fairy light in, in here. Um, two, I think I have a frosted one. I think I have a clear glass one um, remaining. This one though is from the White Flame Company, which is, and I didn't even look at the price when I was looking down there, which is in Hamilton. Ontario and I didn't even know about that company so that was kind of an exciting find for me this one's $14 which is priced the same I think the other frosted and clear ones that I have in the shop are um, uh, party light party light so for those of you unfamiliar this base this is where you would put your tea light in or like a small little stubby candle and you have the lid that goes on top. And so the candle, right, reflects out through these. So there's always these cut designs in there to be able to add a little bit more interest as it's burning and shining through that. Including this when you have five fairy lights on your site. So I have five fairy lights. You have a pink fairy light, a party light fairy light, a pressed glass fairy light, and a frosted fairy light. Okay, so I knew that I had the, the frosted and the clear glass and the pink, yes. So, okay, cool. So there's a number of little fairy lights. They're just really kind of a, a, a pretty little um, a candle holder, if, if you want to look at it or think of it that way, right? That, that uh, they're holding a small little tea light or something. Somebody gave a bunch of hearts for this fairy okay. light, I guess. So. Okay, cool. Okay, let's pop over here. Let me do the bunnykins. So I know two weeks ago, I think I um, listed a bunch of little bunnykins figurines. Um, I went through the box. I've got, I've got a bunch of boxes. I'm slowly working my way through some vintage stuff and found two additional ones. So just so you know, I just added the Eskimo. Um, and he is for $25 on the site. And I added in the mother and i think that she is one in a series of three so she's the mother in her um little vintage swimsuit so she is 30 the eskimo is 25 the eskimo actually um comes in the original box and we just seem a little bit aware a little bit dented um but has the original box card with it as well um, in addition, I have another vintage Bunnykins mug. I had two mugs on the site. Uh, buyer took both of them the other day. And uh, so this one is with them picking flowers, both on both sides. So this one is 15. And then I have a little vintage Bunnykins um, bowl, which is the painter. And this is for 22. And if I knew who that buyer was, I would let her know because she was hoping for some rules, but I don't have her name. So sorry, sorry if it's you. If it's you, it's here. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about a couple of these, these pieces. So I found, I came across this little vintage bronze ram figure. I thought it was cute. So that's why I got it. Um, just again, just, you know, the vintage bronze, really cute. And then I looked it up. So it is currently on sale on used.ca for $175. Which is just sort of ridiculous unless you're really into vintage bronze figurines. Um, so you could go to used dot com use dot ca sorry and you could buy it for 175 dollars or you could go in my store and get it for 18 <laughs> because that's a deal for 18 like even if you don't believe the 175 dollar price which i don't i mean you can ask whatever you want that doesn't mean that that's what people are paying um so it wasn't a sold price it was an asking price but still 175 is kind of outrageous um, because I did not see 
a signature anywhere. Now, it's got the felted bottom, which was professionally applied, which means that they wouldn't have signed the bottom if they were selling it um, originally with a felted bottom. But um, they, too, did not have Providence on it, even at $175, which I would expect. I would want a certificate or I would want um, that they knew who the original artist was for the casting, but super cute and a good deal for 18. And apparently comes with a story. Now, the other story that I had on something was this cute pic. And here's where sometimes like your research is kind of funny. I mean, because the first one that I found online, an identical pig like this, um, the individual had said that it was a porcelain Mikasa pig and was charging $46. So first of all, this is not porcelain. It is also not Mikasa. And if it was Mikasa, they would have stamped it Mikasa. And it is not stamped or signed anywhere. The next listing I saw said that it was from Global Studios Ceramic and that it is a decoupage pig. Yes, ceramic. Yes, decoupage. So it's handmade in England by the Global Studio Ceramic Company. This all rings true to me. They had an authorized certificate for their pig, which again makes it that much truer. However, they were asking $216 for their pig. And I gotta tell you, the pig is not worth $216. It is, however, worth $14. And maybe it's worth more than, I mean, it's worth more than the 14 if somebody is asking 216. But I mean, it's an awesome decoupage. It seems more like it's hand painted than decoupage, except I can see where the lacquer coating is not 100% perfect. If it was worth $216, I would expect the lacquer to be perfect. I am not as picky about it when I'm buying it for 14, however. But regardless, it's a super cute little pig. And for $14, you get something that is potentially worth significantly more. Handmade, England. So, you know, just sometimes you just have to, you just have to know, you have to do some of your own research, I guess, a little bit on some of these things. I try and do it for you, but regardless, my prices are so low that even if I mess up, it's still a deal. <laughs> okay, this is just cute. It's not vintage. It's not an antique. It is just a super cute kind of egg-shaped chicken that I love. It's not Mikasa. <laughs> It's not Mikasa, it is not sand, it is not handmade pottery, it is just cute, and it is $6.50. <laughs> because sometimes cute is enough. Okay, um, let me go over here. This is a cast iron flat backed finial. This, this really is like a doorstop, right? perfect little door stopper. It's in a matte black with just a little bit of gold detailing, um, $9 on the website. It would also be perfect up on a mantle, part of a vignette against a wall. So just a nice decorative piece up on a shelf somewhere if you need to have that little hit of black sometimes. This guy, so this is a collectible Minnie Mouse mug. So it's got the white dots on red on the outside, red dots on white on the inside. However, this is old. So I don't know if it was originally fully matte, but it does have some spoon marks in like when you stir your coffee, those marks on the inside. I've put that in the description so you should know. And it's priced at only $5 accordingly but it has no chips no cracks and if you are collectible of vintage disney then maybe this is one you need to add to your collection especially for five dollars uh, this guy is just super sweet it is not a brand name of anything 
It is just a lovely little white ceramic sugar bowl, lidded sugar bowl with raised floral detailing. Oh, you can see that really well down there. Can you see it up there? Oh, you can see it too. And it is only $6. So if you're looking for a nice, cute, new little, little uh, sugar bowl that you're not intending to be a major statement, but you just want something cute for the table, there you go. Uh, next, let me do this vintage one. Okay, so this is from, oh, I was going to say Germany, and it's not Germany. This guy is from Belgium. So people were calling these apothecary jars. I'm calling it an apothecary spice jar because I think just an apothecary jar is a mis misnomer. And it's usually called a, an apothecary jar only because of the, the kind of the bulbous lid on this. Now, I have left the original plastic on there, which is discolored now, um, which as clear plastic ages, this is what it does. However, this just pops right off. So if you choose to replace it with just, you know, a little rubber rim, um, go for it. But this is, um, this guy, um, it, the milk glass and with the uh, blue printing. Um, I saw one of them for $25 online. So this guy is eights. And just a nice little, little piece, especially, I mean, if you collect milk glass, then it's a no brainer, but um, just even in terms of the blue and white, it's kind of a nice little decor piece but perfect for storing or perfect as a little salt cellar, right? This is just a signed handmade little pottery um, condiment dish, nut dish, um, trinket dish, ramekin. It would, it would go in the oven, whatever you'd like to do with it. Um, but it's just super cute, handmade, also $5. Now, I had not too long ago uh, offered up a glass flower frog and um, I have two more. Oh, they're on the pink sheet. I have two more. I'm selling them each individually. This guy's nine, this guy's 11. So obviously you're looking at the different sizing of whatever your container is. This one, that's what I had on the sheet, six, 10, 11. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, so this looks like it's 11 holes for your flower arranging. Um, and I do mention for, for you guys to know that there is some chipping around the edge, which again, because you're using it for flower arranging is not really a big deal in my mind. Um, but if it would bother you, don't buy that item. This one doesn't have chipping. It is a larger one. I have the dimensions of both in the listing. This one's eleven dollars. Yeah, and it has five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. I think it's sixteen holes on this one. So um, both awesome pieces. They're both vintage, but fully functional and a great way if you find yourself a little bit challenged with arranging your florals and getting them to stand upright. That's what floral frogs are for. That's what they do. This guy, okay, so this is from Lindgren Pottery and it is stamped and $12 for this little square platter. I just love kind of that, that Sedona sort of ombre finish on this one and um just even even the top it's got kind of like speckles and just it's just really nice and again i love the greens for a change i mean very often you get a lot of people glazing with the blues and uh, i just love the look of this one with the with the greens in there okay somebody bought something mm -hmm. so 12 dollars for this guy and hang on just a couple more things this one this is a little antique piece called joyful from hummel and uh 
it's got the the Hummel logo stamp across the the back. Hummel, of course, is from Germany, and uh, just a cute little. Um, again, I'm going to say vintage because I'm not quite sure of exactly her age, but she doesn't have any chips or cracks, so in great shape for this little Hummel figure. The sugar bowl and the global pig were sold. Ah, oh, the sugar bowl and the pig gone. Okay, cool. Okay, last piece. This is a green depression glass citrus juicer. It's also a two cup, um, two cup measuring cup. It's got the cups and the ounces going down the side here. And this is $12 for this guy. And I did see this one, this exact one, when I was researching it. Um, yeah. This one was on Etsy for $60. It is on my website for 12. I will be listing it on Etsy for more than double that, <laughs> which still puts it way under the 60, but on the website, it's only 12. And if you love depression glass, then this is a perfect addition if you don't have it or something similar. But it's also, regardless of that, it is a fully functional piece. If you've ever used citrus juicers, this is great. And it's got the holes to be able to allow the juice to be able to go down below it and to be able to pour out just a nice, nice little piece. Good for okay. margaritas, squeezing lime juice. Good for, there you go. See, Nick's already getting into the, this is the first, first day of spring tonight. Spring starts tonight, I think, so. Last night, I think. Yeah. Or last night. Okay, so this is the first full day of spring. Nick's already into the summer margarita mode. He's already thinking about juicing uh, juicing his citrus for his margaritas. Okay, that's what I've got for you today, guys. Thanks for tuning in. If you had thought about joining us on the weekend on Saturday for the, uh, the alcohol ink class, jump on that. Tomorrow's the last day to sign up for it, and then I'll close it off so I can... Uh, plan for those that are attending um if you wanted the apothecary labels from iod again if you want it sooner rather than later you need to jump on that with whatever your local stockist is if they still have them in stock because once they're out nobody's restocking till at least sometime in may so that one was the hot ticket item and uh you know, if you don't need it till May, you don't need to buy it till May. But if you have some some thoughts and plans about it, then you need to be buying it while your stock is still have it because you're not going to be able to restock for a while. And check out my videos. I'd love to be able to hit 10,000 soon. So any help that you can give with liking, sharing, you know, subscribing, getting other people to subscribe, I'm good with that. Appreciate the help. Thanks for tuning in. Check out the, those videos. Check out my chicken on Friday. I love my chicken. So check out my chicken. It's amazing what you can do with old scarves, guys. I look forward to seeing you next week. Until then, take care. Oh, I have to pull you guys in closer. Sorry. This one just doesn't want to turn off, does it? <laughs>